So what does it mean, strategically speaking? It means that my lecture fell on the floor. Uh, Mr. Frank Lowy, the head of the directors of the INSS, Major General Amos Yadlin, head of the INSS, friends of the INSS from Israel and abroad, officials from the government and the military, researchers, distinguished guests. In these very days, we found ourselves at a junction. 2017, of course, has the opportunity or presents an opportunity for improvement vis-a-vis -vis the new administration in the USA in terms of policy. But 2016 ended with uh, discord in terms of Israel as far as the forces, the balance of forces in the areas concerned, Syria and the international arena, the Palestinian arena, as was reflected by the 2433 resolution of the Security Council and, uh, the, and the statement uh, given by the Secretary of State. We had the terror attacks in uh, Berlin, Baghdad, Cairo. This was a painful reminder that we find ourselves in a war, in a global war, a third world war vis-a-vis -vis radical Islam terrorism and radicalism, extremism, and although ISIS was pushed back in its various geographical core areas in Syria and Iraq and Libya, its capabilities and its desire to continue to conduct terror attacks in more remote places is on the increase nonetheless. I think the phenomenon of the Islamic State and those um, terror attacks trying to create um, enthusiasm is worrying. As far as the balance of powers in the region is concerned, the most important development is the Shiite axis um, strengthening after the fall of um, Aleppo. I think this axis will become even stronger if the day after the war over Mosul, where the Shiite uh, militants um, play an important role, will enable Tehran to create a land corridor from Iran through Syria all the way to Lebanon. And let us add the ties that Iran has with the Houthis in Yemen, the threat this poses to Saudi Arabia, and of course the strategic um, trade channel in the Red Sea. I think the Hezbollah bases and Iranian bases in Lebanon creates this channel of threat, and it lies counter to our security approach. As to the international arena and the Palestinian issue, I think the resolution of uh, President Obama to give us that umbrella, that um, protection in terms of missiles, the resolution 2433 by the Security Council, not only does it not bring peace nearer, but it distances it. I think it allows the Palestinians to fortify themselves in various radical approaches and to evade responsibility. I think the resolutions of such committees at such a time, when in the background we see the terrible tragedy in Syria, the terrorism by ISIS, those terrorism, the stabbings, the shootings that continue and exposing the infrastructure of terrorism of Hamas in Judea and Samaria, I think such resolutions, again, reflect the loss of a way. I think that the USA that is no longer in the area and has caused a breach of trust between the various allies in the region reached a low point in that resolution when the USA turned its back to its important ally in the region. We have to say quite sincerely and um, speak the truth, even when there are conflicts. We have to say that the USA supports us, and we have to say this in international forums. In all that relates to Syria, which is a key arena as far as we are concerned, 
and uh, impacts the entire region. I think we have to reach an agreement and understanding with the incoming American administration and to exploit the fact that we can speak with Moscow as well and make sure that its interests are also taken into account when it comes to Syria, because the USA and Russia can cooperate in order to mitigate the terrorism of the ISIS because of the geographical proximity. But it's important that even the day after Mosul and Raqqa, they will not enable Iran and Hezbollah to base themselves in Syria. I think beyond mitigating ISIS, Russia and the USA have an interest in exploiting the situation in Syria in the region, generally speaking, in order to protect its impact and its interest over time. They must be interested in mitigating the radicalization. I believe that the new administration will not ignore the arsenal of rockets and missiles that Hezbollah has in the north and of Hamas in the south from the workshops for creating weapons and uh, bombs in the Jewish Sam Samaria and, in, and will not ignore the weak points of um, the Palestinian leadership. The fact that uh, money is transferred from, to, from Iran to Hezbollah and the Houthi and Yemen, who've already fired missiles at ships in the Red Sea and undermines various regimes in the Gulf area. I believe that the policy of the new administration will be realistic, will express the recognition in the fact that there are certain things in our reality that we cannot do, and it's not responsibility to demand of Israel to do certain things, and will support certain practical initiatives that may improve the negotiations and ties in the area. My impression is that more and more factors understand this. My impression is that there are three conditions that are necessary to promote this policy. The need, the, the planning, and the feasibility. I think that in terms of the financial uh, situation, and that is a priority among the Palestinian population, and there's a lot of criticism in the Gaza Strip as to this, I imagine that our neighboring countries where, with which we have peace agreements, Jordan and Egypt, know that it is their interest to um, have Israel strong and stable and that cooperation between us in energy, water, agriculture, transportation, trade and other areas as well may assist them and ourselves as well. And my impression is that as far as the Arab regimes are concerned and on the Arab streets, there is that recognition that Israel has advantages in these areas as an island of stability, um, economic growth and prosperity. And people understand that this is pragmatic and that if there are good relationship between different countries and Israel, this will create advantages, and this has potential to create strategic change. I think that this being the backdrop, and I'm not only talking about them as Minister of Intelligence, but Minister of Transportation and a member of the Security Cabinet, I think, again, with this new administration, although we definitely talked with the previous administration, we have to promote two main efforts or initiatives. On the one hand, as far as the state of Israel is concerned, we have to reach compatibility as much as this is possible regarding policy building in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria. And to go back to the policy that was acceptable for many years, I think that in this, you know, entire complex situation, this bind in which we find ourselves, we have to promote certain processes, at least in two central arenas. The first thing uh, that I have been promoting for a few years now, and I'm doing it now, and I have the blessing of the Prime Minister Netanyahu, is a plan that um, which basically connects the Middle East uh, by through the valley train that leaves the Haifa port, and there'll be two new ports there, towards Jordan. It passes through Bechean today, and we would like to connect it to the Jordan uh, border. And there's already a good line, again, between countries that bring 
um, stock to the Haifa port. And this is, uh, again, this is transported by land, uh, merchandise that will reach Jordan at the end of the day. We are already active in that area. Would, we would like to recruit Jordan to cooperate and to create a whole trade system. By the way, we did not invent the logic in this. This logic was already determined by the Turks for 400 years. It was around, they controlled the area. It was said by the Hijazi train, by the by British, and then it was stopped. That train activity after the borders were set, and then there was the conflict that became rooted in 1948. This is not a new reality. We are developing the system that was already intact years ago in all sorts of ways in order to create a whole train system that will enable Sunni moderate Arab states to connect to the Mediterranean by a whole line of trains. The infrastructure is already there. In many cases, we are simply connecting things up to transfer merchandise, and it will be a sort of a land bridge in the Middle East to the Mediterranean Sea. We are now establishing a new harbor, by the way, a Chinese company, one that tended to operate this uh, port for 25 years. There are a lot of interests here, there are a lot of financial uh, strength here. We are also forming a plan of, again, building a train system from uh, Saudi Arabia to um, uh, J Jordan. And we would like to enable Jordan to be that hub, to be the sort of a a land port um, to which various trains from Arab states connect and Israeli trains from the harbor, from the Haifa uh, port. And we are also planning the connection of the Palestinians to that very same network from the joint industrial zone in Jalameh that is already operating. We're creating a terminal and connecting it to the valley train so that Palestinian merchandise can move from the Haifa, Haifa port through the valley train um, and get to Arab states. And again, two-way direction. What I am describing to you is something that we have that we are promoting. We would be happy to get the support of the American administration. I'm also happy to say that also in talks with the previous administration, they extended their blessings for this uh, enterprise. And of course, we wish to support Jordan in this. I think there is a, the, the, the need is there. Um, and the feasibility is there, the financial value is there, and we can create that feasibility despite the political situation, although certain things that do not yet have a solution, we can still develop this area and achieve prosperity by working together. And again, this there is a geo strategy here that has existed in this area from the times of the Bible for thousands of years. It's a strategic area. I think this is something that we have to present to the Palestinians as well. I think the fact that they will be connected to the system, to this network, will give them financial potential, potential to expand, to grow. And I think that is the most crucial thing that I see right now in the framework of our ties, to allow these two populations to move forward, to advance even under the current limitations. Along this, and uh, again, those uh, rail, the rail tracks that we call the peace rail tracks, and we are promoting these. You'll hear more about it in the future. I've been initiating for a few years now, and I feel like that old Cato, uh, who, you know, who warned back there way in Rome, you know, uh, gave out that warning um, against Hannibal. But I don't know if it helped him, but I do believe that the state of Israel must take a decision as to finding a systemic solution for Gaza. We left the area. There was a dispute about it, but it's ended. Today, Israel, on the one hand, is not in Gaza. We're not there. We are prepared. We uh, stop uh, threats. We'll continue to do so. We'll not allow anyone from there to undermine us, attack us. However, we don't have any interest to hold on to and to close off 2 million Palestinians in Gaza. But that is the reality. Although we have left the area, we have evacuated the area, we are still considered the responsible body. We have to surprise what's happening at sea. You know, we have to protect ourselves against uh, ammunition, against uh, ships from Iran. We cannot have a harbor within Gaza. You all understand what the tunnels are and what will, could happen there. But we don't want to leave the situation as it is at the moment. And that is why I came up with an idea. And I very much hope that it is, you know, close to a resolution about, I thought of creating an island at sea, three miles, like five, about five kilometers away from the shore. 
there is already an operational model that exists. You, we can build an airport. We can have desalination plants, energy plants on that island, gas facilities, and many other facilities. And they will also provide livelihood to the residents of Gaza. And after they um, become, uh, after they start working, there will be a bridge that will be built between Gaza. And um, the island, Gaza will have international recognition and Israel will have rights, supervision rights to supervising the marine area. Um, and we don't, we don't intend on working on the island. There will be an international police force on the island. Um, and uh, we know what can happen to international bodies that have to deal with uh, terrorism. But there will be daily supervision. There will be examination over the cross points. There will be three checkpoints. I hope we won't need them too much. And I would like to say to you that the Israeli security forces are very happy to hear about this plan. We know how to supervise such system. And I think the gospel here is that for the first time since 1967, but not only from 1967, but in history, Gaza will have a humanitarian outlet, a financial outlet. This can incorporate our interests, our security and financial interests, and allow 2 million residents in Gaza to be able to have a bridge to the world. We don't want to have any connection with Hamas, but there are a lot of bodies in the international arena and the local arena that have an interest in this. I know this to be true because I deal in it, and I do hope a resolution will be taken to promote the initiative. There will be many people involved in this. But I imagine that those who control Gaza, or those who control Gaza now, will not oppose it. I don't know if it will be for their good in the long term, because when a population is given the opportunity to develop itself financially and to express itself, they will start also defending their human rights. But again, these things that will take place in the future, maybe when reality changes, even in the current conditions. I see room for initiative and for decisions. So again, those train tracks towards the east, again, it's uh, the valley train is, is functional already. In Bechan, there is a terminal already. There are tracks all the way to the Jordanian border. We will connect the trains. We will operate the system, and everyone will be connected. And there will be international activity, financial activity, that will be of political significance as well, well of coexistence and, and sh um, shared living. Even in Gaza, in the most difficult and complicated place with the most hostile place and with a very radical ideology of the controlling party we can still we can promote things there as well I'm giving you an example of an initiative that we can promote I think that the more we know that the USA is supporting us in the positive sense so too our again our ability to maneuver and be flexible will grow because when one knows that when processes are underway you know i talked of initiatives many things can happen the more the other side will be willing to come and discuss this and promote the issues and the more we are sure that we will not be abandoned on the way that we'll be able to maintain our national and security interests even as this is taking place. So our ability to be more creative and to look for more and more solutions to improve the situation will be bigger. So when we see what's happening around us today, I talked about Syria, which is definitely a crucial area. The, the intervention, the, the involvement there, it reflects on many things around the world. Negotiations, talks between different world powers. It will, again, include things that are remote, that are near, and I imagine things from up close will also have an impact on more remote areas and on more remote geographical places. We will maintain our interests. We will not allow Hezbollah and Iran to base itself in terms uh, of, uh, um, of, of military power in the region. And we, have to, we will continue to prevent uh, Hezbollah from uh, acquiring precise weapons. We will also not enable um, any attack to our national infrastructure, the airports, energy facilities, and uh, the home front, the Israeli home front. And if it deteriorates to a conflict that we are not interest, interested in, if Hezbollah does not weaken, if it gets more sophisticated weapons, we will have to respond quite severely. 
in again in, in case things deteriorate and this is not our desire but lebanon will be attacked forcefully and the entire region again will be stormy so all those organizations have to again aspire to aspire to preventing um, Hezbollah obtaining precise and sophisticated weapons because we cannot allow this to happen. We will not allow um, a military stronghold of Iran in Lebanon. We cannot have another front threatening our settlements in the Galilee and the Golan Heights. And also vis-a-vis -vis Gaza, I described again the necessity to prepare ourselves vis-a-vis -vis the threat actively and passively. We do not want to fight Gaza. I think that the idea that I've presented to you will not convince those fanatics out there, but it can also lower the risks, the risk of conflict. It has other objectives as well. It, in case there is conflict, of course, we will use all our force to protect ourselves. You know, we moved back to the 1967 lines. There were three settlements that were on the other side of the security fence. We even evacuated them with the idea that maybe this conflict will come to an end. But it did not bring about the end of the conflict because the ideology is very extreme there. And we know from our own sources that Hamas renewed its ideology. It's updated its manifesto of erasing um, Israel. It's at, the, it's at the top of its priorities, its ideology, not to talk of any, you know, improving uh, the quality of life, but we know that within this area it can be done. And of course we continue to develop the state of Israel. We are not a country at war. We are not in a state of emergency. I mean, you can see the roads that are being built. You can see the train tracks that are being built. There are lovely guests here from the United States. I think you did it 150 years ago, right? Uh, during uh, the President Lincoln's time, even during the Civil War that you had, he, President Lincoln, built very developed infrastructure, and you, you know, and you're finally renewing every, everything so that the Chinese won't uh, bypass you. They, they did it, by the way. But we are a tiny little state, and we use that same American model, that model that was, again, executed and used in Europe after World War II, of having a whole network of infrastructure and the Marshall Plan, and we know of it. And what they did in Asia uh, during decades, we are trying to connect Israel, again, have a network of roads roads, two new ports, airports, uh, railroads, one big system that connects the entire country in terms of high tech. We, you know, let companies um, continue to grow. We develop our country. Um, we were even praised for our technological advancement. We would like to improve the entire quality of life of all the residents within the reality that we uh, live. Um, and we take practical steps. Of course, this is difficult, but we would like to improve the relationship with our neighbors. It is our interest, as I said, to have to have the neighbors around us stable and to have, you know, uh, shared living coexistences in the best possible way with all those living around us. And we will continue doing so. Thank you and lots of luck.